day class. In this video, we are going to introduce the theoretical framework from the four classics perspective. The four classics, including the Huang Di Nei Jing, Nan Jing, Sheng Long Ben Cao Jing, and Shang Han Zha Bing Lun. So these four books are considered as the classics in Chinese medicine. The first classic we're going to introduce is Huang Di Nei Jing. The Huang Di Nei Jing has 162 articles. It proposes the emphasis on the concept of holism. We're going to have a specific discussion on the concept of holism in the future videos. Here, we just give you a very brief introduction of the concept. Firstly, it emphasizes the human beings and nature. This also in line with the, the theory that we said the Chinese medicine is related to the astronomy and the meteorology, the nature. The human beings are going to be affected by the position of different stars even such as the 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 position of the especially the the position of the the earth the moon and the sun we're going to be affected by these stars so that's from the the view from the astronomy that's from the nature we're also going to be affected by the climate and nature and and the weather so that's the meteorology when we see human beings, we're going to see from the nature. We're going to consider the interference, the influence from the nature. The human body as a whole. When you when you got headache, when you suffer from stomach ache, we don't see the headache itself, we don't see the stomach itself. We're going to see your your body as a whole. We're going to think the stomach ache is it from the liver or from the lung or even from the spleen. The headache is it from the liver or kidney deficiency or the liver fire. It also can be from the stomach fire. So all these is, is because we see the human body as a whole. In some area have some problems, it might be the root cause might be in the other areas. So we're going to analyze, analyze human body as a whole. The unity before the physical body and emotion. Our health is going to be affected by the emotion. The emotion is a kind of a pathogen and then these emotions can affect the internal organs directly. For example, if when you feel, especially when you feel depressed, for example, in the situation, if you break up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you may lose appetite. You may feel low and you don't have appetite. So that's the emotion can affect the physical body, can affect the, the function of the physical body. This emphasis also has been proposed by the Huang Di Nei Jing. The relationship between the human body and the social environment. The social environment can be the environment, it also can be the social status. It also will affect the emotion. The zhang fu organs, the meridian. So these, um, these theories we're going to study in future, these have been, has been proposed by the Huang Di Nei Jing and the Zhang Fu organ, the, the theory on Zhang Fu organ and meridian. The whole system has been detailed discussed in Huang Di Nei Jing. So our basic theory is actually based on the discussion of Huang Di Nei Jing. This book actually was a summary of the medical knowledge 
before 475 BC. So many information, a lot of information has been discussed in Huangdi Neijing. And the, the information is very important even for our today's study. That's why it is considered as one of the classic. The yin and yang theory, the five element theory. These theories, as we study, we will understand that these theory were not developed specifically for medical, for Chinese medicine. These are actually developed in the philosophy. The philosophers try to use these theories to analyze, to explain the phenomena in the nature in the society, for the people, for the country, and nature. And then in Huangdi Neijing, he proposed that we can apply this theory into Chinese medicine. So this is one of the most significant improvements in medical science. If before the application of these theories, we based on the experience, which helps can be used for which diseases, which acupuncture points can be used for specific diseases. However, when you ask why, we don't know. We didn't know because we don't have a theory to explain what's the relationship between. We knew it works, but how does it work? We don't know. So the theories help us to understand how. When you know how, you will know the theory, and then you can further apply to something similar. That's how important the theoretical framework of Chinese medicine. So these are all proposed by the Huang Di Neijing. Nanjing. Nanjing is another important classic that's discuss the difficult questions that's raised from Huang Di Neijing. So in Nanjing, the author further discuss the specific topics that raised from Huang Di Neijing, specific, especially the detailed discussion in the pulse diagnosis. So Nong Ben Chao Jing, this is the classic on the herbal medicine, 365 kind of medicine. From the number, you also, you also can see from the literature a few, 34, 43, and then when they develop to 365 different kinds of medicine. That's the accumulation and the development on material medica. The classification method, the upper grade, the medium grade, and lower grade. That's one of the most advanced classification methods at that period. Pharmacological theory. These theories is, is very important even for our modern practice. Nowadays, we still use these kind of theories, which helps you can use together, which helps you are not supposed to be used. You are not supposed to use together, which helps they can enhance their efficacy, which helps when you use together. They can reduce or even create the toxicity. So the, all these theories were recorded in this classic Sheng Nong Ben Chao Jing. The last classic, Shang Han Zha Bin Lun. This is one of the most important classic, as we know. That's the previous classic, the pre previous three classics. They discuss ample information on the theory, how to analyze, how to, apply, uh, how to explain the phenomena on human health and the nature. However, how to apply the theory into, your, into our clinical practice, the different dis discussed in the, in the previous three theories, the three classics. In this classic, Sanghan Zha Bin Lun, it bridged the gap in between the theory and the clinical practice. 
That's why it becomes one of the most important classes. It shows us with examples how to apply the theory into our practice. So it bridge the theory into the clinical practice. That's why that's how we can use today. How we can use as an example today how to come from the theory to the clinical practice. The central differentiation. That's also what we are doing today. The treatments we are going to base on the syndrome. We are going to base on the patterns. The treatment variation were all proposed in Sahan Tabingu. With the same, the same disease, we may use different formulas or we can may use different acupuncture points. With the same acupuncture points, we may use for very different diseases. The, how to apply these theories is from the, the, the examples and the principles that's proposed by Sanhan Zabinru. After this book, we apply these kinds of principles in Chinese medicine until today. So there's no development or no further improvements from Sanhan Zabinru until today. That's why Sanhan Zabinru it's very important in the history of Chinese medicine. Dr. Zhang Zhongqing, the author, also he was considered as the sage of the medical doctors. Due to his significant contribution to Chinese medicine. The development of the formula, we can see from the, the numbers of the formula from Huangdi Neijing. As we said, this, this book, the first classic, in many focus on the theory. There were, there were 13 formulas was, were recorded. And Sahan Zabinu, 269 formula from six to 700 years development, from 13 to 269. And as we studied the history, further more we got in Tang Dynasty, because Dr. Sun Simiao, Qianjin Yao Fang got 6,500 6, different formula. And then from in Song Dynasty, the government published even more formula and herbal medicine. So as we can see that these are the development of the formula and the accumulation. The development of acupuncture and emancipation, we can see some stories and records during this period. For example, Dr. Bian Chue. There's one story that says Dr. Bian Chue treat the prince of Guo. Guo is the, the small country, the old small country of China, or a small state of China. Bian Chue treat the prince of Guo, the unconsciousness. He, Bian Chue used the acupuncture to treat the un unconsciousness of the prince Guo. And also another story that the bian stem or the stone acupuncture would treat to were, were used to treat the, the king of Qin. In Huangdi Neijing, there was more than 300 acupoints that were recorded. The five Su points were proposed. The five Su points are one of the most important special points that we are using today. From the, the fingers to your elbow, off your toes to your knees, around this area, we got five very special acupuncture points that we can use for different kinds of, a, a lot of different kinds of treatments. So these theories were proposed in Huangdi Neijing. These are all the developments at that time. The, the Yuan source points and also the different techniques. For example, in future we will study the reinforcing technique, the reducing technique, and thrusting, lifting, thrusting, rotating, all these techniques were proposed during this period.
these are the initial stage of the theoretical system. These four classic also symbolize the establishment of the theoretical system. After these four classic, after the period of 256, all the developments in Chinese medicine were based on the four classics. There were other developments. As we focus on acupuncture, so we are going to introduce some of the improvements, some books. These we have already introduced in the history, so we are not going to discuss in, in details. Mai Jing, the one focus on pulse diagnosis, Zhen Zhou Jia Yi Jing, Zhen Zhou Acupuncture, Volume A and Volume B. The, this is still the, this was used as a textbook for acupuncture training. And now our books also based on the, this book, Fu Bing Yuan Hou Lun, the development of, of the causes of different diseases, the pathogenesis and the pathogens. Qian Jin Yao Fang and Qian Jin Yi Fang, these are all important books. This considered as milestones during this period. The next period is the one book we need to mention the San Yin Fang. San means three in causes Fang formula. So in this book, it the, the author proposed that the causes of a disease can be categorized into three causes. So this also the one of the earliest classification of our diseases. This is very similar to today. Today we use the clarification according to the diseases. For example, muscular system, skeletal system. And at that time, in 12th century, we use three causes. External causes, internal causes, non eternal and non internal causes. So, this author he proposed that we can categorize all these diseases into these three categories. External causes, including the, the diseases due to external pathogens, the wind, the coldness, summer heat, dampness, dryness, and fire. So we're going to study these pathogens in future. Internal cause, causes, injuries of several emotions, joy, anger, worry, overthinking, sadness, fear, surprise. These are all the in emotions that can affect our human health. Non-internal and non-external causes, unhealthy diets, insect bites, animal attacks, traumatic injuries, poisoning, etc. So anything not related to these two can be categorized into non-internal and non-external. This was the one of the most important purpose of the classification, classification of diseases. And then when the time goes to the next stage in Jin and Yuan dynasty, we have discussed the four famous practitioners in this period and with their different schools. When the time developed to the 14th to 20th century, especially this is in around 17th century, Li Qi, the theory of Li Qi, as we know that the development of Chinese medicine from the last classic of Sahan Zabin Lun, until the 17th century, everything is in this framework from the four classic. And then in 17th century, Dr. Wu Youxin and Ye Tian Si, they realized that there might be other pathogens. They, they don't know, they didn't know what kind of pathogens, but they knew the laws of the pathogens, the principles of pathogens. So they named this pathogen 
，而是力气，力气。这是 the the main pathogen of the one diseases, or the main pathogen of pandemics. They realize that people they affected by Li Qi, they will have similar symptom. The first patient they got similar symptom, and then they can transfer to other patient with the same symptom. So this is actually the pandemic. For example, COVID-19 is considered as Li Qi. So once you understand the Li Qi can transfer from one people to another to enter more with similar symptoms, what's important here, you need to get, stop the contact. That's the social distancing. So these were proposed even in the 17th century. Li Qi is very different from the six pathogens, the six external pathogens, because they can because they can transfer from one patient to the other with similar symptoms. During this period, some doctors also try to improve the theory because they find some conflicts, for example. Dr. Wang Qingreng, he compiled one book, Yi Ling Gai Chuo. Yi Ling means Chinese medicine, the field of Chinese medicine. Gai Chuo means the mistake correction. So he tried, he tried to correct mistakes in Chinese medicine. In this book, Dr. Wang Qingreng, he affirmed that the memory is in the brain. Not in the heart. The reason why we say we focus not in the heart is because traditionally we think that the the mind, the memory, the thoughts, everything is in the heart. That's why even today the treatment towards memory we focus on the heart. That's because on the of that of the the theory. And Dr. Wang also founded the theory of blastasis. So uh, during this period, as we discussed in our history, because of the interference from the Western medicine or from the conventional medicine, the, dot, the practitioners, the dot Chinese medicine practitioners, they tried to integrate Chinese medicine and conventional medicine. That's why there were many theories developed into this. In during this period, have the similar theory from the conventional medicine. These were considered as kinds of developments in Chinese medicine. However, the efficacy, the contributions of the theory was not as good as significant as the previous books. The reason is because. Although in Chinese medicine we also confirm that the memory, we also agree that the memory is the in the brain, but this it don't really affect our modern treatment. Our treatment today, a patient suffer from the memory problem. For example, a patient suffer from poor memory. Our treatments in even today, we still focus on the heart, as the brain's function is part of the heart function. So the brain, the memory, the brain, and the heart. The brain is the middle person. When you treat the memory, you still can treat the heart. So these are some of the explanations in the theory, and some of the developments during this period. Nowadays. The China, the theory of Chinese medicine keeps this developing. We have to emphasize that the development and the creation of Chinese medicine theory must based on the previous knowledge, must based on the Chinese medicine theory. The inheritance, the inheritance, is the foundation of all kinds of creation and developments. This also can be confirmed from the learning theory 
that we discussed in the first lecture. The creation, the evaluation, sits on top of the, the study. It must be based on the knowledge, must be based on the comprehension, analyzing. So these are all the foundation you have to study in order to achieve the creation and evaluation for your further study, inheritance. So that's why. And even today, when we study acupuncture, we can just study the theory from Huang Di Neijing, from a medical book that were, was compiled 2,500 years ago. That's inheritance. In this video, we have discussed the developments of the theory specifically from the initial stage to today. And in the next video, we're going to discuss the two characteristics of the Chinese medicine theory, which are the concept of holism and surgeon differentiation and tumor variation. Thank you for your attention.